Suggestion? If you're worried about seeing images, use Urban Dictionary. What things should people never Google? My bro is back for another story time, how exciting. You're in for a real treat today my man. Make Andrew happy and sub to the channel or at least like the vid. Because if you do, I'll send you some anime fasimisks. Enough chat, let's start the stories. Carbuncle. You think you're going to see the cute little blue fox creature from Final Fantasy. You won't. There used to be this subreddit called Enough Internet, which was god awful. There were videos of people dying by chainsaws, toothpicks down dickholes, people cutting off arms, it really changed me. One year my mom bought some female relatives some nice winter coats, red with black fur trim. She wanted to get matching hand warmers, called muffs, so she googled black muffs. It did not go well. Tub girl. Too bad feeling lucky doesn't exist anymore. Edit. Apparently feeling lucky exists in desktop mode, but I've not owned a computer in years to realize this. My bad. Edit 2. My most upvoted comment on Reddit is tub girl. Outstanding. Cyclopia human I made the mistake after watching Futurama. One of the characters, Leela, only has one eye. But human Cyclopia is a lethal birth defect and not the cool sci-fi stuff I expected. Seriously. Do not google it. So I support schools doing web security for their kids. One call we got was they had been doing an engineering class and they actually asked their kids to image search things longer than 6 inches. Yeah, don't google that unless you have safe search enabled. I always get a kick out of looking at their keyword block list, some of the crap middle school kids search for is hilarious. First off, in the rare case you're using a shared work computer, front desk, production room, lab, etc., you should always google in incognito mode. That way when other people, like me for example, use the computer that was previously used by my coworker for example, you don't see local abortion clinics as a recent search term when you're trying to find a local pizzeria, for example, and treat that as the reason why you're working the holidays because said coworker is sick. For example, Tuck your massacre digest in beheading massacre films. Russian soldiers surrendered to extremist forces hoping to become POWs. Unfortunately, they were deceived, and Chechen commander Yumaretl Sultanov ordered his soldiers to cut the prisoners' throats as revenge for his fallen comrades. You'll get to listen to the cries of young men and their futile efforts to stay alive in these tapes. Edit. As many have pointed out, yes the gurgling sounds are quite bad. Hopefully, you have a strong mind and stomach. Harlequinage thesis. Probably misspelled, not gonna google to fix it. Wikipedia Harlequin type ichthyosis is a genetic disorder which results in thickened skin over nearly the entire body at birth. The skin forms large, diamond-shaped plates that are separated by deep cracks. They affect the shape of the eyelids, nose, mouth, and ears, and limit movement of the arms and legs. Restricted movement of the chest can lead to breathing difficulties. These plates fall off over several weeks. Other complications can include premature birth, infection, problems with body temperature, and dehydration. Makes it sound like what the thing has. Fournier gangrene. I worked in a burn ICU wound care unit. I saw this more than I ever thought. Mostly it was older, diabetic, truck drivers. That is some horrible condition. The Google images are terrifying. Do people just ignore it and let it get to the point of blackened and dissolved flesh? I think I would be immediately to my doctor if I saw even a hint of my penis or scrotum beginning to rot or smell. I assume they must smell terrible, judging by the images? Are these folks usually suffering mentally? It would seem likely? Or why wouldn't you seek immediate help? Feel terrible for anyone who has developed this. What a disease. Edit. As if I need to add this do not search Google images for this. I have gotten so many messages of regret. Just do not. For your own sanity and peace. There was this band from Indonesia a few years back. I don't know if they're still around. They're a hardcore punk band, and they're named after a song called Under 18 by a classic Nick hardcore band called Warzen, a song about shows, being all ages and generally inclusive. My friend was over at my place and I played them for him. He decided to google them for more info. 
He searched under 18 Indonesian hardcore. On my computer. I'm definitely on a list somewhere because of him. Somewhat related. I was watching a film called Bound from the directors of The Matrix, it's great, highly recommended. The song plays in the film which I wanted to get a copy. It was by a Chicago lesbian band from the 90s, so pretty obscure, however they called their album Sex Child. I'm a brave man, but I never typed that one into Google. I think they were trying to be shocking, but they kind of shot themselves in the foot. Oh, I have a big list. Run the gauntlet, it's not that bad at first, but it gets bad. Arm and my was crime scene photos, no. Bryce Williams video, not that bad, but. I don't advise. Ed Gine human art, it's not that bad, just disturbing. Shotgun death bath, don't. Abdulia Sanchez live stream video, not that bad, but the situation is disturbing. Gabriel Kuhn and Daniel Petri, if you are interested in this kind of stuff, I advise reading their story only, don't look at the pictures. Nikki Katsaura death photographs, don't. Facial degloving injuries, don't, seriously. Stacy Wilson bus crime photos, pretty bad, don't. Body farm, it's really not that bad at all, plus it's for scientific purposes. Some of y'all gonna google this, so I even rated which ones ain't that bad, and which ones are. Edit. One guy two spoons, unpleasant half, three guys one hammer, yeah, no, smile.jpg, just spooky, man shot on Facebook live Leveliac. this one isn't that bad, and the good news are that the guy survived. Cartel torture Leveliac. no, only if you're really into gore. Edit 2. Apollo 1 burned bodies, not much gore, but pretty sad. Anything related to a crime you're about to commit. I sometimes worry about my search history. I'm genuinely quite a curious person, for example, I read about articles involving some crime or another, and then inevitably my curiosity gets the better of me, and I end up searching for things related to it. The other day I read about someone in my area who got arrested and then released after being accused of taking photos of schoolchildren in public. What he'd actually done was take a photo of a bad driver's number plate, but the photo included schoolchildren in the background, and somebody on Facebook reported him to the police. This led me to Google, without thinking, is it illegal to take photos of children in public in the UK? If I ever get falsely accused of a crime, there's a fair chance my search history could get used against me. That's why privacy on the internet should be protected at a much much higher level than today. Inspecting people's behavior on the internet is somehow closer to inspecting people's thoughts than behavior. Sure, you are accountable for some behaviors on the internet. But communication and browsing on the internet should be considered as private as an intrusive thought or some innocent daydreaming. Edit. As this is getting some visibility, let me tell what I do, a humble suggestion, I am sure there is more you can do. 1. You don't need any middleman to access the internet, therefore don't let Facebook feed you with content, don't use Google as a content provider. 2. Your browser should not be under the control of anyone, so no Chrome. You just need a piece of software, not another service. Firefox seems fine to me. 3. Emails should be completely private. I use ProtonMail. 4. Protect your connection, ideally all the time, but at least any time you connect to public hotspots, hotels, airports, friends Wi-Fi. Use a VPN. 5. Maintain a decent hygiene of your computer. No random toolbars, extensions, add-ons. No weird apps. No optimizers. No apps with unreasonable permission requests. The thing is, this stuff not only breaches people's privacy, but it also changes our behavior. Not only do Google saving each and every search you ever did give an unwarranted insight into your thoughts and beliefs, the knowledge that Google does this changes your behavior about what you search for. The primary reasons for the cameras in each person's home in Orwell's 1984 wasn't to catch people doing bad things, it was to force their whole population to work under the assumption that they were always watched, so that they were forced to always act and behave according to Big Brother's wishes. We're slowly approaching something similar happening now, with big tech, people here joke about getting put on watch lists etc for doing a Google search, but there's also a kernel of truth there. People do to some degree modify their search patterns and actually stay away from searching on certain topics. 
An obvious example would be child porn and oft not searching for actual child porn, but searching for certain news or information regarding it. Say you wanted to find some of the scientific studies that showed that child porn being legal for a short duration in certain European countries in the 70s coincided with a reduced number of child sexual abuse in those countries. I'm willing to bet that a fair share of people would feel rather uncomfortable trying to use Google to find information on those studies just because they know that those search terms would forever be saved and associated with their Google account. Thanks for watching. What did you think of the story time? Let me know in the comments below. If you liked the video smash that like button and subscribe so you don't miss any more story times.